Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about why good is always the mortal enemy of great. Why good is always the mortal enemy of great and how to avoid the trap of compromise and complacency. You see, anytime we get to a place where we're doing good, and many of you are doing good right now. Many of you just had your best years ever last year because of these crazy low rates. And because of course that rising tide floats all the boats. So not only are refis at an all time high, but also even the purchase business is crushing it right now because of these affordable rates. So that's putting a fire under the market and under the industry as a whole. And how blessed are we out of all the industries that are getting crushed right now, getting crippled right now, getting their proverbial nuts kicked in right now, we, among very, very few in this pandemic environment that we're in, are absolutely being blessed with an avalanche of awesome, with more income than ever before, more opportunity than ever before. Many of us have more deals than we can handle. These are good problems. These are what I call champagne problems. So we'll take it. And it's important to just revel in how blessed we are. We're in a quote unquote essential service. We're not in the event industry. We're not in the hospitality industry. We're not in the travel industry. We are blessed friends. So let's not lose sight of that. And on the flip side though, with so much business coming in, it's so easy to sit on our laurels and say, I just wanna maintain what I'm doing. I don't wanna do more. I just wanna maintain what I did last year. It's so easy to say, hey, I'm doing better than most. I'm doing pretty good. And to settle for good as opposed to climbing to higher ground and going for great. The problem with settling for good is we start to compromise. We start to coddle our comfort zones. We start to get complacent. We start to just be happy with what we have versus expanding, growing, and at the end of the day, it's cool if you want to stay at the same level you're at, but there is no in between. You're either growing or you're dying. And the problem with complacency is it leads to neglect and compromise, and that leads to stagnation. And things that stagnate tend to rot. You don't want to be one of those people who are just rotting on the vine, trying to stay at the level you were last year and the year before. You want to be expanding and growing because that's the spout where all the good stuff pours out. That's the place where you feel most alive. When you feel most grateful, excited, thankful, and vital is when you are growing, true or not true. So we're going to dive into this because I think it's really important for many of you to just have a, another healthy reminder on how we can press the grow button and the go button as opposed to just stagnating, getting complacent, and wanting to stay at the same level. So let's talk about it, shall we? why good is the mortal enemy of great and how to avoid the complacency trap. It reminds me of a very interesting and rather unusual way to trap monkeys where they would fasten to a tree a device that would hold nuts and they leave just enough room to get the hand in the device but as soon as they go and grab the nuts and try and pull their fist full of nuts out, they can't get it out because the fist is thicker than their hand was when they were sticking their hand in. So their hand's going in like this, then they grab the nuts and then they clinch and now their fist is thicker and they can't pull their fist out. And so they trap monkeys this way by putting this bait in this jar-like device and of course, because they're not willing to let go of the bait and they're persistent in trying to get it, they remain stuck in this trap. And I think that's a lot like us as human beings where we go after a certain level of income and production. And because we get trapped in this time for money treadmill where we feel like, man, the more I work, the more... I make, but also the more stress I have and the less time I have for my family, the less time I have for my kids and my spouse. And because we start to get into that trap of trading time for money and because we are getting into what I call the practice builder trap, which is where you own a job, a J-O-B versus a business that sets you free, 
you end up creating this wiring, this uh, sense of relationship between the fact that once you get to a certain level of comfortable income, anything more than that feels like pain, right? It's like, why would I want to sacrifice more time away from my family? Why would I want more stress? Why would I want more headaches? So we end up kind of clenching our fist around what we feel like is a happy medium where we can make some good income. We can have a decent lifestyle, but anything more than that becomes costly. It becomes too much pain, too much stress, too much sleepless nights. Can you relate? And so what you want to do when you get to that place is realize that's a symptom of doing it the hard way. That's a symptom of being a practice builder, not a business builder. It doesn't have to be that relationship. The truth is you can double, triple, quadruple the income you're making now while working half as much as you're working now when you have the right systems, when you have the right policy procedure protocol, when you have the right team in place so that you're no longer in the time for money treadmill, trading time for money as a practice builder. You can graduate to the next level of freedom, autonomy, independence, and income by becoming a business builder. Business builder means you are trading value for money, not time for money, but value for money. That allows you to break out of the time for money trap and now all of a sudden, the sky's the limit on how much money you can make, how much freedom you can have. You can do what you want, when you want, with whom you want, anytime you want. There's no limit to the meaningful charities you can contribute to. There's no limit to the amount of adventure you can create in your life because you've broken out of that treadmill training time for money. So the symptom of you trying to hold on to the same level of income because you don't want more stress more struggle, more strife of having to do more loans. The reason why you're in that trap and the reason why you have that inclination towards conserving what you've already done versus expanding and growing is because you've been a practice builder versus a business builder. So it's there's nothing wrong with being a practice builder, but if you want to have the thrill of growth, if you want to have that thrill of accomplishment of growing versus contracting, and you want to stay out of the stagnation rut of just sitting on your laurels and trying to maintain what you did before versus conquering new ground, right? Conquering new mountains versus sliding down old ones. Then you need to shift your paradigm from being a practice builder to being a business builder. And what that is, is letting go of the nuts in the jar, right? Like the monkey was, let go of the practice builder mindset, the practice builder philosophy and paradigm and embrace a new way of being, which allows you to create a business that actually gives you freedom. Because as long as you're a practice builder, you're like that monkey holding onto those nuts and you're never gonna have true freedom like that. You've gotta let go and embrace a new way of approaching your business, which is of course more sophisticated, requires higher level leadership, higher level marketing, higher level skill as a business professional. But as long as you're willing to develop those skills and develop those muscles, so to speak, you can have it any way you want it. You can make half a million to a million plus per year, working 35 hours or less a week. You can go on those adventures. You can experience the magic of having a life on purpose with purpose, doing what you want, with you want what, easy for me to say, doing what you want, when you want, anytime you want. You can create that kind of a magical life with freedom if you have the mindset, the marketing, and the muscle of being a business builder versus a practice builder. And so one of the things I wanna to talk to you about is why the comfort zone kills, because you see, everyone wants to have the freedom. Everyone wants to have the autonomy. Everyone wants to have the independence of making half a million to a million plus per year in this business, working 40 hours or less per week. Everyone wants that. Let's be real. But not everyone's willing to do what it takes to create that. Why? Because it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to learn new skills. It's uncomfortable to step out of your comfort zone and to leave what you're used to the normal that you're used to, even the normal that you're used to, even though that may be uncomfortable, even though that may be stressful, even though that may give you a lot of uncertainty because you're worrying where your next deals are going to come from, even though that may not give you fulfillment because you are only as good as your last deal and you're always stressing about the uncertainty of your future, 
even though that may be painful because you're losing sleep about all that uncertainty and stress, it still becomes normal such that it becomes your comfort zone. If you want to step into next level living, next level breakthroughs, next level, level abundance, that's going to be outside of your comfort zone. And anytime you step out into next level living, next level results, next level growth, and step into a bold, audacious move into this new world called your dream, you're going to bump up against the outside edge of your comfort zone. And what that looks like is fear. What that looks like is uncertainty. What that looks like is inconvenience and uncomfort. And often it's a terror barrier that's very real for us because it's like, what if I do this and it fails? What if I do this and it doesn't work? What if I do this and I spend the extra time, energy, money to go for my dream, to go for what most people consider as unrealistic, right? Why don't you just go get a real job, right? That's the, the mantra that our, our parents and, and many people who have that mentality will tell us because it just doesn't make sense. You're on 100% commission. You eat what you kill. No safety net. How do you live like that? Why don't you go get yourself a real job, right? Well, for those who are like you and me, we can't go and get a real job. Are you kidding me? That's like absolute death rattle to our fulfillment, death rattle to our sense of joy and peace and contentment because we're not cut out for that. If you're anything like me, you're not mentally fit to work for anybody. It's just, it does not fit how you are made. It's like, I can't even imagine punching a clock nine to five working for someone else. I've been self-employed since I was 19, 18. I can't imagine just punching the clock and getting a check at the end of a pay period and holding it up to the light and saying to myself, is that all I'm worth? I can't imagine having a micromanager having me under the thumb and telling me how much I'm worth and having that glass ceiling over my head and that off office ball and chain around my ankle. For me, that's just not even an option, period. That's no way to live. But a lot of people, that's their normal. That's just their Monday to, to Friday. That's just how they live because they're just so used to it. So the comfort zone is what you're used to. The comfort zone may not be comfortable, but it's what you're used to. And so when you get comfortable and you're making 200,000 a year or 150,000 a year or 300,000 a year, whatever it is that you feel is comfortable, the problem with that is that all of a sudden now, if all your motivation comes from income, you're never gonna climb to that next level because there's only a certain amount of motivation we can get from money. You know, like once you get comfortable financially, it really doesn't change your lifestyle that much when you go from 300K to 500K. It doesn't. I mean, it could technically, maybe you have a few more vacations, but it's not enough motivation. It's not enough fuel in your rocket to get you climbing new mountains and conquering new dreams unless you have a dream that goes beyond the money or it's about people that you're liberating out of suffering or it's about you bringing light into a dark world or it's about helping people have a better quality of life or it's about liberating people out of the suck of their problem into the glory and the radiance of a new life, a dream accomplished. So that's what gives you the ultimate unstoppable fire of white hot burning desire to go out there and conquer new mountains is to have a dream more than just accumulating money, more than just accumulating things. It's got to be a heart connection to purpose that propels you out of your comfort zone and into newfound growth because you're living on purpose with purpose to make a difference in the world. When you have that kind of meaningful why, that's going to have you step into your comfort zone. But just trying to maintain the same level of lifestyle and just wanting to stay where you're at in terms of being able to make a certain amount of income so you can do the least for the most, chances are that's going to lead you into compromise because it's not connected to something that has you every day waking up in the morning with pep in your step and sparkle in your eye wanting to conquer the day because you're making a meaningful difference in people's lives that inspires you, that motivates you, that has you feel like, man, every day I get to serve people in a meaningful way that liberates people out of the hell of their pain or their problem and into the heaven of the dream that they want to accomplish. 
See, when you feel like you're making a meaningful difference in people's lives, whether that be the money you give to worthy causes, when you're making a difference, either through the work you do and or the money you give and or the volunteerism of volunteering your time to a worthy cause, that's what animates you with an unstoppable fire to make a difference and to serve and to use your gifts and talents to really make a difference with your life. And that has you stepping out of your comfort zone every single day. And the cool thing about that is when you step out of your comfort zone, that's when you feel most alive. That's when you're growing, expanding, contributing. That's when you feel most alive because you're becoming the best version of yourself. Every day you get better. Every day you get sharper. Every day you're expanding into the fullness of who you're called to be. That's a life on purpose with purpose. The opposite of that is comfort zone, compromise, and complacency that has you just drifting, has you going through the day instead of growing through the day, has you just trying to get by and try to get the maximums by doing the minimums. That ain't going to cut it for a life on purpose. That ain't going to cut it if you want to have the best version of your life, the best version of yourself, and the best legacy. It ain't going to cut it. You know it and I know it. So that's why the comfort zone kills because what happens is we want the dream. We want the fulfillment. We want the freedom. But then we start to haggle about the price it's going to take to get you there. You say, no, I want to make that money. I want to have that freedom. I want to have that impact. I want to have that legacy. I want to make that difference, but dot, 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 right? But it's too much time, but it's too much work, but it's too inconvenient, but it's too much money, whatever the price is. That's why I often say the interested, they'll always find an excuse, but the committed, they always find a way. The committed always find a way to create what it is they want to accomplish. But you have to be committed to that such that you're willing to step out of your comfort zone because your comfort zone is always pulling you back into all the reasons, all the rationalization, rationaling lies to yourself rationalize, to ration lies to yourself on why you can't, why you won't, why it's too hard, why it's too difficult, why it's too costly, why it's too inconvenient. The comfort zone is always giving you all these reasons that stop you. And the comfort zone is always trying to have you play safe and play small. The comfort zone is always getting you to contract in fear, having you stick your tail between your legs and contract into a compromising position. I want to have that dream life, but that's not realistic. I want to have that dream income, but you know what? Maybe I just need to settle for an okay income. I want to be a top producer. I want to be number one in my country, or I want to be top 10 in the country, but you know, those guys, they work too hard. I don't want to work that hard. I don't want to sacrifice family. Well, who says you have to sacrifice family to be a leader in the industry? Who says you have to sacrifice family to be a shining star in this industry? What if you can actually have it the way you want it without sacrificing your family and your health and your sanity by working smarter, not harder. See, all those guys that are sacrificing their family and their health to be top producers, I'm telling you right now, they're doing it the hard way. They're not doing it the smart way. They're doing it the hard way. But if you think that getting to the top means you're going to have to compromise your health, your family, your sanity, then again, you're thinking like a practice builder, not a business builder. You're doing it the hard way versus doing it the smart way. I submit to you, life is too short to compromise on your dream. You can have it the way you want it if you don't settle. So how do you avoid complacency? How do you avoid getting complacent and say, hey, I'm doing better than most. I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I'm, doing, I'm not doing too bad. And you start to soften the problem. When you compromise and you get complacent, you start, you start to soften the problem. You say, hey, you know, yeah, I've been in the business for five years. Yeah, I've been in the business for 10 years, uh, you know, but I'm doing pretty well. I'm seeing some growth. I'm seeing some growth in my pipeline. See, the cool thing about you stepping out of complacency is it has you have a dream that's so big that there's always room for growth. There's always room for that next level where you never sit on your laurels because the dream is so compelling. And you're so connected to the difference that you achieving that dream is going to make in your life, your family's life, in the world, that there's always that next mountain to conquer. You don't get to the top of one summit and say, hey, I'm done. I'm going to just pack it in. I'm just going to drift from here. No, you say, hey, I've conquered this mountain, but look at that next peak. 
Look at that next peak. How many more people can I serve when I get to that next peak? How many more people can I make a difference for when I get to that next peak? And there's always that next level of growth that has you making that next level impact in people's lives. And that's a life well lived because your job is not just to get through the day. It's to get from the day. Your job in life, as far as I'm concerned, is not to just to make do, but to make history, to create a legendary legacy, to create a legendary impact. And that means the opposite of compromise and complacency. So how do you avoid complacency? Have big, meaningful, hairy, audacious goals that are so scary and exciting at the same time that you need to step into your champion self, your winner self. You need the help of God to accomplish them because they're so big, so scary that they excite you and scare you at the same time. That's a compelling vision that has you continue to grow year after year, day after day, has you getting out of bed every morning with that pep in your step and that sparkle in your eye. So it's about having a meaningful vision that really is heart connected to so much more than just the income you wanna make. It's the difference you're making. It's the legacy you're creating. It's who you're becoming. And when you're about who you're becoming and it's about you expanding into being the best version of yourself, then you never get complacent because you're always in the growth path. You're always in the expansion mode. You're never saying, hey, I've done well enough. I'm just going to chill now. I'm just going to drift. No, you say, hey, when I'm most alive is when I'm growing. So I'm not, it doesn't matter what my income is. It doesn't matter if I go to a million or even 2 million. I'm always going to want to expand and grow and become the best version of myself because I know I'm either conquering new mountains or I'm sliding down old ones. And I know I'm more fulfilled. I'm more happy and I'm more passionate and joyful when I'm living on purpose with purpose in expansion mode, not contraction and compromise mode. So that's the way of the champion friends. Always be expanding, never compromising, but expanding. So there's a contrast between two mindsets, two paradigms, two ways of life. One is to conquer. The other is, oh, I don't know. I think I'll stay in my comfy comfort zone right here. See, those two are always going to be at odds. You can either go for your dream or you can go for your comfort zone. You can't do both. These two are at odds. So the key to having a life where you're living the champion life, the dream life, where you're living on fire, on purpose, is to understand that the comfort zone is always going to be odds with you conquering. And once you get that, then you start to create a culture and you start to create a habit and a rhythm in your life of getting comfortable being uncomfortable. That means, hey, I don't give a rat's ass about the comfort because to me, I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. That's why I take cold showers Monday to Friday to condition myself to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Do I get a second belly button? Hell yeah. Is it cold? Hell yeah. Is it uncomfortable? Hell yeah. But now I've conditioned myself by virtue of doing it for the last two years, two or three years, and now I'm comfortable being uncomfortable with it. So it ain't no thing but a chicken wang. That's just a Friday. That's just how I roll. And it brings me energy. It brings me juice. It brings me life. I feel electrified. I feel energized because I'm comfortable being uncomfortable with something that really brings life to my bones. So if you only do the things that are comfortable, life is going to be mighty un uncomfortable. You do the things that are uncomfortable that are strategically empowering you to your greatness life is going to be mighty comfortable. It's that paradox. It's that irony of you going after things that are uncomfortable, just like going to the gym. Going to the gym, it's not comfortable. You're sweating, you're grinding, you're clanging and banging, you're straining your muscles to failure. Anytime you overwhelm your muscles to failure, that is uncomfortable. A lactic acid buildup in your muscle is creating strain and pain. But without that strain and pain, there is no gain. So notice again, you can conquer in the gym or you can cobble your comfort zone and just drift. But if you just drift in the gym, you're not going to see the muscle growth. You're not going to see the result. You might as well just stay home and stay in bed. You can either conquer or you can have your comfort zone. You can't have both. So you want to make 2021 your best year yet. You want to kick ass, take names, chew bubble gum, crush it. 
You want to live a life on purpose, with purpose, on fire. You want to be an influencer in your community, an influencer in your company. You want to be a shining star, top producer in your company. You want to make more income with less time, energy, and effort, and more freedom and fun and fulfillment. Yes, you want all that. The question is, do you want it enough to get up earlier when it's not comfortable, when you're used to sleeping? Do you want it enough that you're willing to set your alarm clock at a time that doesn't feel convenient? Do you want it enough that you're willing to get to the gym while everyone else is sleeping? Do you want it enough that you're willing to take a cold shower, not because it's comfortable, but because it electrifies you with energy? Do you want it enough that you're willing to work earlier and stay later if that's what's necessary? Do you want it enough that you're willing to invest the time, the energy, the money to become the best version of yourself, to step into the fullness of your potential, even if it's uncomfortable and inconvenient? Say so everyone wants to be a champion. Not everyone's going to do what it takes to become a champion. Do you want it enough? Because the interested, they always find an excuse. There's always something that stops them. The committed, they always find a way. That's the champion's mindset. That's the champion's way. So that being said, if you're listening to me right now, you're seeing this right now, and you say, Dorn, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I feel you. I'm ready to take that next level growth. I have been compromising. I have been complacent. I have been drifting. I'm done with that. I'm ready to start driving, not drifting. I'm ready to start expanding, not contracting. I'm ready to step out of my comfort zone so I can step into growth mode. I'm ready to put my excuses aside and say, screw it, let's do it. I'm more committed to my dream than than I am my comfort zone. If that's you and you're defiantly committed to adding at least, at least an extra $100,000 to your annual income and you're on 100% commission, making at least 80 basis points, and you're wanting to learn the secret sauce on how to attract top producing realtors to make you their exclusive, put you on their speed dial, you're wanting to learn the secret sauce to mine the gold from your database as it grows so you can maximize repeat and referral business on autopilot, you're wanting to learn how to take the shortest path to the cash to your success, to double, triple, quadruple, even quintuple your income while working smarter, not harder. If that's you, and you want to make 2021 your absolute best year yet, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. And when you go there and you book a call, you'll get on the phone with myself or one of my consultants. We'll lift up the hood on your business. We'll look at what's working, what's not working, where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, Frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, our goal for you is that you'll leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we'll have some fun along the way as well. All right, y'all? So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you and you're ready to find out what it's really going to take to create a breakthrough in your business and step into that next level of living, next level production, let next level prosperity and next level freedom, go ahead and book a call mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with us. My name is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. We just talked about why good is always the mortal enemy of great and how to avoid the trap of complacency. Trust you got some value from this. Come and hang with me again on the next episode. Be blessed and we'll talk to you again soon.